All right. Today on the podcast, we have Matt Jasker. He is the founder of Fitness Fusion 24-7 and the creator of The Coffin Bench. So, Matt, thanks for hopping on. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you got it. So can you just start off by giving us a quick introduction of who you are within a minute or two? All right. Um, I'm a, I've been a strength coach for the past 12 years, and I've owned Fitness Fusion for the past eight and a half, nine years. Went through my bachelor's program and went to become a physical therapist. And about halfway through school, I realized I don't have enough money to finish. I don't want to wear khakis my whole life. And I was also working as a trainer in a gym at the time. I thought I want to do this. So I took whatever money I had and I did the smart thing and I invested into a failing gym, took it over and moved it to here. And ever since then, been training, like to try to help people out with educational videos, but also throw some entertainment into it as well. And that's basically who I am. Awesome. Well, I'd love to hear the story of the gym. Would you mind telling everybody just go? I mean, I guess it'd be cool to hear just how did the gym start? You mentioned you took it over as a failing business and how did, how has it evolved over time and what does it look like today? Yeah. Um, well, it's about twice the size today, maybe a little bit bigger than when I started. Uh, I started lifting the weights at like 12 years old, like everybody. And uh, started working out at the Boys and Girls Club at our local one here in Lancaster. Someone told me you could do this for a living. And I thought, what do you mean? I could train for a living? And I'm an idiot. Like, I think every trainer goes through this. Okay, I'll charge 30 bucks an hour. And I'll have eight people, eight hours a day. I'll be making great money. And it's not like that at all. <laughs> and where I am now, uh, experience and educational wise, I wouldn't have hired me back then either with just a little certificate saying I have my license. So training from gym to gym, you, you start off, you work at multiple gyms because that's the only way you could make money, do side jobs. There was a local gym and the owner let me train there and keep, he was really good to me, kept all my profits, just helped take care of the place. You know, he got a job making way more money. So we kind of forgot about the gym and I came on board put my initial investment in, then slowly just took the business over and grew it to what it is now. So I probably have one or two machines that are still original and I've completely changed everything over past like six years. There was a huge change for us. I moved it from a nice business suite area with a storefront and everything and uh, center of town to a warehouse. One of my idols as a strength coach is Joe DeFranco. He's the OG warehouse gym guy. And I just love seeing his gym with the turf, the racks, the garage doors being opened up. So when we first moved here, it was a garage. So mm -hmm. not garage gym, like personally, it's a warehouse, but I, I can <clears throat> consider it a garage gym, even though it's my business. And it's about 4,000 square feet. Just took a long time to get where we are now. Yeah, that's just kind of how we got here. Looking to expand one day, build my own building, build my own space. Uh, but for now, we're here. And that's basically the story of Fitness Fusion. Uh, very cool. I guess the, re the obvious reason to you as to why I asked you to be on the podcast was because of the product you created. We have we a have, uh, lot of inventors and creators on this podcast and and a lot of people simply like to hear that story. So would you mind yes. telling us the creation of the coffin bench? Absolutely. Long story. Competed in powerlifting, strongman, arm wrestling, all these other sports. And I always not only wanted to do my business, but also compete. But always in the back of my mind, I wanted to invent something one day. I just never thought of anything yet. These nail bats back here, this was an idea of my nail bats by Matt, uh, but it turns out that's really illegal to sell those. So that was out. <laughs> and it all started last year, October exactly, when my girlfriend's grandmother died. It's October. We're dealing with a death in the family. So the entire month, it's very morbid. 
You know, you're planning funerals, planning saying goodbyes. You see pumpkins everywhere. You see skulls and cock. And one night I'm sitting in my apartment and I have a guitar shaped case, a coffin shaped case called coffin case. And it's black. It holds my base. I just was looking at it in the corner and I thought that'd be a cool bench. <laughs> so then I pull it out. I lay on it, almost break it because it's not made for benching. And I thought, okay. Not horrible. And I think every gym owner has to have a local upholstery guy for just wear and tear on my pads here. I uh, thought maybe he could make this. And sure enough, one of my best friends, Mark Wilson from Buffalo Bully Fab, he just mm-hmm. started a fitness equipment company. He started making things for me. And then he went on to do a lot more uh, equipment. And someone commissioned him to do like a custom fat pad style the pad and the bench he's a fabricator so he found a better upholstery guy about 20 miles away from buffalo to just make him a pad with the textured grippy vinyl and i didn't think that was possible because my upholstery guy's real old school and i don't know how to describe his work for weight benches other than old school like you could picture it and think that's not what i'm looking for this other upholstery guy just so happened to be ex brother in-laws with the one of the owners of arsenal strength and he would make their pads for them so he made one for mark and i checked it out and thought well this is awesome to know that when my fat pads or anything tears in here this guy can help repair it so that's who I thought of first. I called him up. I'm like, hey, can you make me the same kind of pad you made Mark, but just cut it in the shape of a coffin? And he thought, okay, weird, but doable. So from there, we're going over the names. We're going over like different ideas. One of them was measurements. So I had all my members. Half of them, I just measured their head to their butt their shoulder width, and from the center of their head to the center of their shoulders, and get all these different measurements and come up with an average. Then I just drew on one of my Thompson fat pads and on the ground with chalk to get the right angles down and measurements for the average person. And I got everything down, and then I'm stuck at how... I market it because it started as just, this is going to be cool for my own gym. No one's going to have this. Then people are like, well, people might want to buy that. Okay, cool. Well, how do I brand it? And we went through everyone, my upholstery guy that made it to my t-shirt guys that make my shirts, signs, all sorts of products. And no one could print on this textured grippy vinyl. It's a special process as opposed to other ones. So I messaged Abmat, Dylan. He's been on here. And he did some custom uh, crash cushions, put my logo on uh, the log crash cushions and then the regular crash cushions. I had to beg him for like a couple months to do it because he kept saying no. But (laughs) I messaged him, hey, man, what do you know about printing on this grippy material? He says, this is back May this year. Yeah, uh, you need a special UV printer, which is ungodly expensive and no one here in buffalo has one and they're they ordered it they just don't have it they're gonna have it like in a month so i thought okay i'll wait and i told him i have an invention i have an idea for a special bench pad i remember listening to him on your podcast where he goes over the story of ad matt he goes over you know collaboration not competition and i told him i remember you saying it's better to have a product than to just have an idea to go to him, right? You don't want to, you know, hey, I got this written down on a napkin. What do you think? So Uh I wanted it to look like it's a finished product, but it was hard not to have branding on it. Then he asked me, I asked him, whenever I order from Admat, I used to get this patch. It's like about yay big, an embroidered patch, and they give you some stickers too. And I asked him, what about these patches? Because I saw the new Kabuki Strength transformer bar put a type of patch logo on their bar instead of that embossed logo he goes to me matt don't bother that was the biggest hassle months just to get 
patches. Those are a waste. We'll never do those again. I'm like, all right, maybe he knows something. But I still, I would call up other companies. Uh, the company that made all the Letterman patches for the my local high school, everything. Dead end after dead end after dead end. And then I finally get somewhere and then they stop responding. So I'm sitting there one night scrolling through Instagram and I start kicking myself because I use Instagram and YouTube as a search engine more than I use Google. And I think, why haven't I looked for someone that makes patches here? I type type in custom patches and sure enough, I get a page. It's got like 13,000 followers bunch of videos reviewing, you know, customers talking about how great it is. Shoot them a message. It's like midnight gets back to me in 10 minutes. This is months. Okay. This all started last October. My upholstery guy could make this bench in a few hours. And the one thing hold me back was the stupid logo on the side. And I could have just messaged this guy. Sure. Cool. Be done in about a week. It's this much. We'll send them over. That easy. What size do you want? All that, all the details. A lot of his customers doing reviews on, they'd get hoodies with these big patches on it. They were in Brooklyn. So I thought, cool, it's all made in New York. Awesome. Not Buffalo, but still in New York, still in the States. I finally get the patches in and um, these big old things from Pakistan. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's why he answered me right away at midnight because it's the middle of the day over there. Gotcha. So I thought, oh, well, they're awesome. It's been this hard. They're great to work with. Screw it. So I messaged my upholstery guy. Hey, let's get this going. Can you sew these on? Sure. And that's what we did. As far as everything else is concerned, I'll, I'll, I'll let you uh, take the lead from there. I, w- I would I would ask wh- where are we in terms of time now? Like you mentioned, you started considering that, and last you started thinking about this product October of two thousand twenty one. Yep. You now have you now have a full prototype and the patches that you would like to add to the bench. Um, All set, ready to go. And is but when did you, when was when I would say, like, when did uh, when was that ready? Was that just this month? Are you talking about, or is that this was this m- prototype right here? Just came off the press yesterday afternoon, just in time for the first one. Had the materials. It was supposed to be done last week, but we have to make it. Part of it outside, and the weather was killing us. Gotcha. And yeah, so finally got my patches September, and just waiting for my guy to fit me in in October. And then now here we are. So it took a year to make something that co- that takes a couple hours to make, but just delay after delay because I wanted to get it looking right. Gotcha. One thing Dylan talked about in his podcast was making your product almost look like a rogue product because maybe perhaps, okay, they might want to pick that up or whatever, but also yeah. more professional and also with the layout of my gym, with all of our competition benches and fat pads, just so it just blends and it looks like Matt didn't just make this in his garage. Right. So first of all, I had no idea that you reached out to Ab Matt. Um, Mm -hmm. did you, did you actually tell them what the product was? No. So you never told them that it was a coffin shaped. And then I want to say, and we haven't had much communication other than, Hey, I saw you had a, you're releasing a coffin bench. You want to hop on the podcast and tell the story. That's literally the only time we've ever chatted. Yep. And was that before Abmat launched with Donnie Thompson, the Frankenstein pad? Yeah. Or was that after? I can't remember. I'm sorry. We spoke in, I spoke with Abmat in May. Of course, I didn't like tell them my idea because, you know, you're, you're unsure of it. And I almost feel bad for saying that because I know, uh, I know how Dylan is with Abmat and they're, uh, they're good people. They're not like that. So 
how Donnie Thompson figures into all this and yeah. how <laughs> Ab Matt and the Frankenstein pad. It is, at first, I thought it was the most unfortunate coincidence in the world. And kind of like with Kabuki Strength and Aleko with their open trap bar coming around the same time. And big coincidence. It's not like Chris Duffin saw Aleko and thought, let me just do all this engineering overnight and bring mine to market. Not that at all. So first, I think it's important to credit Donnie Thompson for coming up with the fat pad in general. Because without that, I would have never known the benefits of a wider bench. I would have never known, you know, how to approach things as an inventor with your own product. So it's because of him that I was able to do this. Now, that, that seems weird at first. Well, let me explain. So Donnie, on Instagram, he's not afraid to call people out for other companies ripping off his inventions. Sornex did it with the center of mass pedals. Every company has a hefty pad or a wide pad or, you know, a husky fat pad. This whole time, I've known that. I use his products every day, his tempering rollers, his techniques, his fat bells, fat pads, fat mats, everything. And I had this idea. And I thought, I want to bring it up to him and get his blessing, so to speak, and possibly get his advice. We talked from time to time. He's planning on hosting a body tempering seminar in my gym. And he's cool about if I got a question, need some help with something, he'll just help me out and answer. So I'm sitting there thinking, if I bring this up, I don't want him thinking I'm ripping off his product with my own fat pad. I don't want to, I don't want him to think that's an abomination of, of my product. That is just you know, horrible. So he posted on his Instagram something about cutting a coffin out of plywood. And I thought, oh, that's funny. Maybe he's just making Halloween decorations. So I messaged him. Uh, he got back to me and we were just talking about it. And I said, hey, I've been meaning to ask you for a while. I have this idea for an invention. I was hoping to get your blessing on it or get your input. He goes, sure, shoot. So I sent him the coffin bench logo. He hits me back with a, yo, LOL, thought of, thought of that 2014, sends me a picture of him with his plank of wood back in 2014. I thought, oh, oh. no. It was a little bit of pride for me because I thought I came up with this on my own, uh -huh. right? Like I invented something. Cool. No one's thought of this. Eh, not so much. Uh, his buddy Jeff McVar, I believe that's how you pronounce it, gave him the idea back in 2012. And he, he, it's all on their Instagram, given the backstory behind the Frankenstein pad. And 2014, he cut up that piece of wood and he was working with Rogue at the time. And he told me they weren't on board before because it's a coffin. It's kind of, you know, but he says now, after 10 years of uh, fat celebration in the, in the fat pad anniversary, they're on board. Now, I misunderstood that. I didn't think that meant on board as in he's making a coffin bench now too. I just thought he meant, hey, they've been selling my products for years. I'm sure they do anything, right, for me. So I thought, all right, cool. Ask him a couple other things, you know, did you do it for the functionality or just to be cool? He goes, just because it looks cool, it's fun. And uh, we got around to talking, uh, we'll talk at Swiss. Now, Swiss is this huge conference coming up this week. It's the Strength and Conditioning Weightlifting International Symposium. So all the greats are going to be there. Um, Joe DeFranco, Juji Mufu. Uh, Stan Efferding, Dave Tate. So a lot of the top strength coaches, athletes, massage therapists, physical therapists, kinesiologists, doctors, they're all going to be there. And just kind of a, a nerd nerding out over uh, there's different classes, there's, you know, going over different studies. And I thought my plan to market this thing was to just, you know, I own a gym. 
I'm a strength coach. I'm busy doing that. So when I have a couple hundred extra bucks, I'll have one of these made and I'll just send them out to people. Send them on to Matt Wenning. You know, bench is 600 plus pounds. I want his feedback. Send one to Juju. Send one to, uh, I don't want to say influencers, but that was my marketing plan to just, yeah. hey, they've helped me out. Try this out. If you want to do a video on it, cool. If it's in the background and somebody sees a coffin and then goes on Google, cool. Not my main priority. This isn't my bread and butter. That was my plan. And Swiss was coming up and I thought, oh, they're all going to be under one roof. So why don't I just get their feedback then? Uh huh. And Donnie was going to be there. So great. I get to talk to the guy about this and get probably the best advice anyone can give you. So we said we'd meet at Swiss. And then out of nowhere, excuse me, I see the Frankenstein pad pop up. And you can imagine what's going through my head. And I thought, there's no way. There's no way that Dylan and Ab Matt and, and Donnie would, would, would do something dirty like this. And I thought, you know, Donnie's had that done to him. Like, this isn't, you can't create that in such a short amount of time. So I messaged Johnny, hey, why didn't you tell me about the Frankenstein pad when I told you about the coffin bench? I'm an idiot. He did. But I just didn't read properly. He goes, oh. full transparency, you, you knew I was making some sort of coffin thing, right? I told you, everyone's on board. I'm sitting here devastated. I'm sitting here feeling my, one of my heroes has let me down. And then I'm an idiot because I misunderstood. So now I'm a week late for releasing mine. So I can't be the first coffin bench guy. So what? And Donnie, he says, hey, you take your product and run with it. Um, mm. Mine's just a limited time thing. I only made like a couple dozen. And when they're gone, they're gone. It's just a promotional celebration for 10 years of the, of the Thompson Fat Pad which came out in October. So we're going to do a Halloween themed bench this year. And I, he obviously thought of it way back in 2014. And that, that pad is badass, Okay. But I don't know if I could swear on this. Sorry. Yeah. You're totally good. Okay. And he sit there, tell me I'm not in the coffin business. That's you. You have that market. I thought, wow, give me the blessing. Awesome. And Unfortunately, I won't see him at Swiss because he, he, he's a little too busy to go to the conference, but I'm going to send him one anyway. I messaged Dylan from Abmat and go, hey, this was my idea back when we spoke in May. Is there any way you guys could still manufacture when you're done with the Frankenstein pad? Like, I was waiting for it to be perfect. And he gives me a little bit of hope. He goes, I got to talk to my co-owner, Austin. Could get a little murky, but it's not impossible. With Donnie is just telling me, go with it. Awesome. He sends me a message again. Matt, I, I promise to help you out with your coffin bench when I'm done with my promotion. So now I'm sitting there thinking the worst things ever. Then it just flips around where I have the guy in the business who has, I think, six or seven different inventions telling me he's going to help me with mine. I thought, okay, cool. And then I start getting tagged on Instagram on the Frankenstein ab map post and everybody, Oh, looks like the coffin bench. Oh no. Defending my honor, but not people are misunderstanding something. So I just respond back. Hey, their pad is awesome. Our pad will be out soon. It's a little different, a little different measurements, dimensions. They're only selling theirs until Halloween, so order that if you want it, if you don't want to wait for mine, all right? They put a lot of work into it. Ed, Matt, Donnie Thompson killed it. It looks awesome. Nothing but positive reviews on it so people don't see that, you know, I'm bitter about something, right? And for the one time I showed class on Instagram, it, it turned out well for me. Donnie messaged me later that night. He goes, hey, I talked with one of the owners of Ed, Matt, and... Uh, they said you showed class in the comments on their post, and I might be able to talk to them about manufacturing for you. So I'm sitting there, what? I got the guy on my side for this? 
it was a little rough not having the first coffin bench out there in the world, but I thought one thing and did a complete 180 by the end of the day. So now I, I released it, I put it out into the world and just to see the interest and see how everything is. And we'll wait to hear from, you know, different manufacturers and whatnot to see if someone can help me with this. Uh, so I'm thinking one thing I'm thinking, did someone steal my idea? But it's not my idea to, to be stolen <laughs> from, you know, uh, like my mind is going back and forth through all of this. And at the end of the day, now I'm better off than I thought it was before because Abmat has their one video had like, you know, 15, 20,000 views, something like that. Hundreds of comments. And I was unsure about this, right? Because some people get a little eerie about coffins. And I'd see the comments and some people, you know, I'll stick with my regular bench. That's cool, but not into it. But a lot of people take my money. That's so cool. So there's, they did my market research for me. Basically, I could see people want a coffin shaped bench. So where we go from here. You know, we'll see. We'll wait and see. Donnie Thompson, if 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 he says he's going to help me out, then that gives me some. You know, I feel like I got some pretty good backup. Like I got like I got a bouncer behind me anywhere I go. And since Dylan and Admat's always so open to collabing, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. He was nice enough to make me the custom log benches. And I had this artwork done for this shirt. And I'm like, I got to put. <laughs> Add Matt's logo on there and then send them one. And uh, I put up a, I put up a link to order shirts for Venmo and still an order one right away to That's support awesome. the uh, business. Yeah, awesome dude. So we'll see. Uh, I don't know if he's seen my finished product yet. I'll have to you know maybe talk to him later. It's just been a crazy busy week. And uh, see what they say, see what they think. But uh, yeah, crazy week so far. But we got a couple coffins out there in the world for people to choose from. I'm I'm going to be honest. That was a way better story than I thought we were going to get today. <laughs> Very cool. And I was the whole time, Thank you. the whole time I was waiting for you to ultimately say how you got screwed, but I'm really glad to hear that it turned out no. well. Yeah. The no. really cool story. I, I mean, I hope everything turns out well. Um, yeah. And you answered basically all my follow-up questions. Like I really just wanted to also know where you were, where, where you were at currently. It sounds like you're kind of in that waiting game. I have one other question. And well, I also want to say like, I posted, I reposted Ab Matt's um, post on the Frankenstein mm -hmm. and um, it also blew up. Like, yeah, I, I mean, quite a bit of people showed interest. I was somewhat surprised. Um, because I wasn't sure what the benefit was. There's a lot. So, so can you can you explain why this is a little bit different than a traditional bench, and then maybe who would actually benefit from this coffin shaped bench? Absolutely. So, the coffin I have found in itself that shape works with our bodies. It works for a lot of things. It's shaped a certain way because we used to bury people that way. So the idea came from my guitar case, a coffin case. Anybody, even if they're not a metalhead, even if they play guitar but they play jazz, a lot of people will buy the coffin case because it is the most functional guitar case. You see, the way it's designed, you, there's a handle on the side like a suitcase. Now, when you go up and down stairs, you can orient the case differently. So you're not banging it on the stairs or on a ramp or anything when you're traveling with your uh, equipment. A regular rectangle guitar case, you have to lift it up, make sure you're not banging it and busting it. So the shape itself is functional in many different ways. Now, as far as the bench goes, well, I'll say there are definitely some big differences between the coffin bench and the Frankenstein pad. Not, not to disparage anything at all, but the Frankenstein pad is more of a celebration 
not, I don't want to say novelty, but I, it, it's made to look cool. You know, if you get that and wear it out and get your sweat all over it, you've done wrong. You, that needs to be displayed. <laughs> Mine, I went through to get very specific measurements, as I was talking about earlier, to go over shoulder stability. Cool. So that's when I, I found that out. My, my, my guitar case is 17 inches wide. The Thompson fat pad is like 14 and a half. If I could find something in between and get the angles right. So up here at the widest point, you have the shoulder stability. It's 15 inches at the widest point. If that's too wide for you, you just scoot up or scoot mm -hmm. down on the bench. You go 14 and a half, 14, you know, down to 13, wherever, which way. And I angled the taper down to that narrow spot to get uh, eight inches at the top and at the narrow portion. Now, for me, I thought when it's tapers, I'm not going to have that hip contact and I'm not going to be able to do that leg drive. So I had to angle it specifically to fit most people's hips. There are two ways to get leg drive on the bench press. One where your legs are a little bit wider and your, your uh, knees are over your ankles, you know, vertical shins. You got a wide base. Now that is a good base for a lot of people, but some people like to tuck their legs deep underneath the bench and almost grab the frame. You can see videos of Louis Simmons. He's almost hugging the bench with his legs like that. But he'll also tell you, you know, there's benefits to different ways. So now this tapers down narrower towards, so you can even grab and tuck underneath the bench more and get that leg drive and get that pressure with your adductor muscles. Then I realized this is functional and multi-purpose because you lay on it reverse with your head more, on, head's not here, but on here. And now okay. we don't okay. have shoulder stability. We have room mobility for fly oh, yeah. variations. So you get more range of motion when you want it. When you don't want it and you're benching, you know, 300 plus pounds, 400 you want that stability so you avoid any pec tears or any shoulder tears, and that scapula bone is supported. But for flies, you just flip the other way. So I thought, oh, my God, this is awesome. Even laying on it this way with this taper, we have more room for some dumbbell pullovers and even sitting up uh, some curls so the dumbbells aren't scraping against the side of the pad. You see the Frankenstein pad, the widest point is a little higher, so you're not getting the – that specific area of shoulder support. But again, that's made to look really cool. And this, I wanted it to be used because I realized, I believe, I believe in this product. I'm thinking yeah. like, this is functional. This works. It's weird. I know that. Donnie has a hard time convincing entire universities to buy 10 fat pads, but sometimes they do. Sometimes they buy a regular pad. Still to this day, we have world championship powerlifting competitions where guys, there's all these different federations and all these different politics within the federations, but you'd have these athletes, the, the world record right now is 1320. If I'm having that person at my meet, I want them on a fat pad. But for some reason, some of the higher ups at these federations, they're sticking with the old school IPF approved pads. Mm -hmm. So it's enough of a hassle to convince people on the fat pad. And I'm sure it's more to convince them there's not going to be any colleges ordering 10 of these for me to outfit their football weight room. I understand that. So this is for people that kind of have the same interest in me, like, oh, that's so metal. That's badass. I want that in my gym. I understand that. But I also want people to know out there that this is functional. This isn't just a novelty to look cool, this works, and here's how. It's not for everybody. I wouldn't want to do dips or hip thrusts off this because of the weird angle. Mm -hmm. So I'm not saying that this is replacing benches. It's just another alternative for people. So measurement-wise, it was very specific for a bunch of different reasons, safety and functionality. And then I found out that we have uh, – different variations and um, 
flexibility with other movements. So it was kind of a, just a pleasant surprise. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, Matt, um, I wish you all the luck in bringing this product to market. Looking forward to Thanks, man. seeing what happens next. Uh, before you go, would you mind just giving your plug, make sure people know where to find you and the coffin bench? Yeah, dude. Um, coffin bench on Instagram, uh, working on making the right website to send your orders in fitness fusion 24 seven on Instagram. Either one of those, uh, YouTube is skull crushers club and all of our links are on there for our website and, uh, other pages as well. Fitness fusion, 24, com. That's a mouthful. I'm working on that. Um, that's basically how you get a hold of me. If you want one of these, shoot me a DM and, uh, we'll try to get one out to you. Sounds good, man. All right. Well, that's going to do it. Thanks again. Thanks so much, Jake. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. Got it.